I don't know how it is with you, but when I go to the doctor for a checkup, he or she inevitably has some questions for me. You know, last time you were here, we talked about not eating too many fatty foods. Have you been eating too many french fries and bacon? Well, maybe, maybe I have. You haven't been watching your cholesterol, have you? No, I guess not. You know, when you were here last time, you said that you would start exercising. Well, I, I, I joined the fitness club. Well, I was hoping that saying I joined the fitness club would answer the question adequately, but the doctor knows better. I didn't ask if you joined the fitness club. I asked if you've been exercising. And of course, the answer is no. You know, we may have the membership card to the fitness club, but that membership card doesn't mean that we're going to automatically be in good physical shape. Now, Jesus said to his disciples, there will be wailing then and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets safe in the kingdom of God and you yourself rejected. People will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and will take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus made that statement in response to a question that had been asked him by someone who was an expert in the law, who said to him, Lord, are they few in number who are to be saved? And so Jesus wants to make it clear that even though God issues the call to everyone to the kingdom of God, we can't assume that we're going to enter the kingdom as part of a great herd with the gates wide open. And so Jesus uses the occasion to teach us something about what it means to be his disciples. And so he tells the parable about the master of a house arising to lock his door, only to hear people outside yelling at him through the door, let us in. But the master doesn't recognize them. And he's not going to let any strangers into his door. But they say to him, you know us. We ate and drank in your company. You taught in our streets. But still, the master on the inside doesn't recognize him. Now, of course, Jesus intends this parable for us to understand that this house, this banquet, this feast is the kingdom of heaven. And the master who at his rising goes to the door is Jesus, who is rising from the dead. And he wants to make the point for us all to understand that this is about the resurrection of the dead, but all of us are going to be called to come to the kingdom. And the kingdom will be for those who truly followed him. And just being at the dinner party when he was there, or just being within earshot of his words, or just following along curiously through the streets of Jerusalem, hoping just to see a little more of him, is far, far less than that to which Jesus calls us. Jesus wants us to know, as he taught his disciples that day, it's not enough just to be a part of the curious crowd. It's not enough just to be on the winning side of a debate. It's not enough to be among the majority of those polled. What he calls each of us to is a personal commitment to disciples. <clears throat> a personal commitment to living a new way of life because we are, are his disciples. A personal commitment to lifetime conversion more and more to Jesus. The call is issued to everyone, but that conversion takes place in the church one at a time. I have to decide to receive the grace of conversion. I have to decide to ask the Lord to give me the grace to change my life to help me to be a better person, a true disciple of Jesus. By the time St. Luke wrote his gospel, the passage that we just heard, there were those, even in the Christian community, who thought that just belonging to this big crowd of Christians was enough to be a true disciple of Jesus. And Jesus said, no, that is not what the teaching is all about. He said that the door to heaven is narrow. 
But the great thing about that narrow door to heaven is that it's the door who is Jesus himself. Jesus who is full of mercy and compassion. Still, it is Jesus and discipleship of Jesus that's the entrance into the kingdom of God. Everyone is invited, and many of them, by God's grace, will be there. Even many folks who perhaps we don't think will be there will have received the grace of conversion and will have taken it to heart and have become good disciples of Jesus. But all of us enter, one by one, through the narrow gate. Who is Jesus? Jesus is everything. To put it in a very simple kind of way, when we get up to the gates of heaven and St. Peter is there and ready to admit us, He's not going to want to see just a membership card, like the membership card at the fitness center. The question that he asks of us, even today as we sit here in church, is this. Did you truly follow in Jesus' steps? Did you follow and live his example? Did you take up your cross? Did you commit your life to the Lord Jesus in prayer and sacrament? Did you reconcile with your enemies? Did you ask God's forgiveness for your sins? Did you make a personal commitment and live that personal commitment out and not just fall in with the crowd? Did you become a true disciple of Jesus and not just one who admires him? Now Jesus says something also very beautiful and it refers back to the prophecy of Isaiah, something that Isaiah prophesied several times. That people will come from the north and the south and the east and the west into the kingdom of God. In other words, people will come from everywhere to enter God's kingdom. Isaiah had said that in the time of the exile, when many of the Israelites were sent off to captivity, he framed it this way. He said, God sent you to these other peoples so that you could bring them back as an offering to God. So that by your witness of Christian faith, by your holiness of life, they will see in you the shining example of the presence of God, and you will be the instruments of bringing them to the kingdom. What a beautiful image that is for us. I think what a beautiful image it is for all the immigrants who come to our country, those of you who have come to us here from many different countries. God sent you to us so that by your wonderful witness of faith, your love for the Lord Jesus, you teach us how to be good disciples ourselves. That's how it works in the church. That all of us together, seeing the face of God in his people from everywhere across the globe, all of us together see what God is teaching us about his kingdom. From the north and the south and the east and the west, Isaiah said, and Jesus quotes it again, all of us will learn from one another what the face of Christ looks like. All of us will learn from one another how to be good disciples. In the very early centuries of the church, one of the saints wrote a little, a little uh, uh, essay about how we help each other on the way to the kingdom. And here's how he described it. He said that in this life, it's kind of like all of us are walking across a frozen lake. Now, everybody knows that it's not easy to walk across a frozen lake and stand up the whole time. We're going to slip and slide. But he said, as we're going across the lake, it's like we're holding hands, helping each other get across that frozen blade. And all of us slip and slide, but together we give each other the strength and the balance to make it all the way across. And so that's how it is in a parish. That's how it is in the church. We support one another in our common goal to go through the narrow door who is Jesus. And he asks us to take responsibility certainly for ourselves and our own behavior, but also to take responsibility for one another. Help one another get through that door. Help one another follow Jesus more closely. Pray for and with one another. And give each other the kind of Christian witness that gives us all the strength that we need. For a hundred years, the parishioners of this parish have done exactly that. One hundred years. We think about how that witness of faith that's been so much a part of this parish has strengthened the people and helped them to follow Jesus and given them sacramentally all the grace that they have needed to follow Jesus with their whole heart and their whole soul. 
the Word of God preached in this parish for a hundred years, the sacraments celebrated for a hundred years, the body and blood of the Lord given to parishioners for a hundred years, sins forgiven for a hundred years, a healing coming from the anointing of the sick for a hundred years, and on and on and on. So has strength been given through this parish to you and all those who have come before you. Indeed, everyone is invited, as Jesus says, to the kingdom of heaven. But he also reminds us that none of us can fall into the trap of thinking that just having the membership card is enough. A true disciple who follows Jesus also finds in discipleship fulfillment and peace and joy in this life, as well as the happiness that awaits us all when we see God face to face. Even now, God is using you and me as the instruments of his love, helping one another in the church to go with and toward Jesus, toward his kingdom. We never forget that the gate, the door, the way, the word, the truth, and the life is Jesus himself. And it is because of him and for him that we are here. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible. Raymond and Alexander and all of our priests 
May all we shepherd the people of God with faithfulness and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations and governments may work together to tear down the walls of anger, anger, hatred, and intolerance that divide peoples and communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor, the abused, the lost, and forgotten may find a place of honor at our table and compassion among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That pastors, teachers, and religious edu educators may always instruct our students in the ways of God's love and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that our community of St. Mary of the Valley, as we celebrate our 100th anniversary, may always seek to follow Christ totally and completely in every dimension of our life together as a church and community, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And the, those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially the parishioners of St. Mary of the Valley and the deceased priests who have served here, may sing the praises of the Lord in the presence of the angels forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear the prayers we offer you for our church and this community of St. Mary of the Valley. May this parish continue to be a place of prayer that refreshes and sustains. May their ministries be places where your love and justice are revealed. May the Eucharistic table always be a place of welcome and nourishment for all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand up for the truth, leave everything you do, no enemy 
Love and service.